One, an interesting one was in 1990, well, maybe I should start before that. The, the issue of a floating exchange rate. I think, that, I think one thing I want to commend Damien for doing is to emphasizing the, black, the issue of the black market exchange rate was the real exchange rate for, for virtually two decades. I, I remember being told that uh, certain, certain older people older than me said that uh, they, they always went to, whenever they went to Miami, they checked the rate of the Jamaican versus US dollar when they, when they were going there the, you, 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 to the Cambio. So, you, so you, you, you had even an international market in Jamaican dollars going on, not even just confined to, the, to, to, to Damien's um, uh, craft markets. You, you had an international market in, 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 uh, in Jamaican currency in the 70s and 80s because the Miami Cambios were basically trading it. In, 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 you know, in, they would give you US dollars for your Jamaican. Of course, the, as David rightly said, that market was a very inefficient market, and of course, the, you, you, you got a substantial haircut um, in terms probably over what you might have paid, got in Jamaica. But, so there was a sort of a lot of little markets. So, so, so the liberalization of exchange control, I think, you know, was very beneficial in it, it made the, the one single market for foreign exchange in the way that Damien has defined it. But it came with consequences. And uh, again, I don't want to go into those consequences in too much detail. That would be another seminar, I think. But, although I have written a paper on it at the time. But the, which I have here with me, by the way. Um, but th those consequences led to calls in 1994 by, uh, and I think Professor Hanke was brought here. And I was wondering if Dr. Davis was talking about him as uh, uh, people who were just calling for, uh, they, have, they have one song, if you like. So he, because he, what, a paper was done for the private sector organization Jamaica, which included looking at the alternatives of a currency board and also dollarization and you know, that got some attention at that time. And certainly Dr. Carl Ross believed that the, you, know, you, could make, you could have made the argument, and he made this argument in 2001 when there was a, I think it was 2001, it was either 2000 or 2001, when the, Dr. Davis kindly, uh, I believe, provided the impetus for a, a seminar on dollarization and brought down Stanley Fisher, I think it was in 2000 or 2001, anyway. So, and, and, and Dr. Ross came there as well, and he said, well, you know, there's an argument as to whether if you were dollarized around that time, you, you, you uh, might have been able to avoid having a period of extremely high interest rates. So, so you know, that, that, that is another issue, and I'm not going to make a, give an opinion at this time, but, uh, that, you know, that, though, th those are the, some of the issues that have come, um, give, you know, the history of this thing. Now, so, so then we, so we, we fast forward to, to, to um, as I said, it was either 2000 or 2001, and um, the issue came up again, and as I said, I, I showed, um, at the time, the, the Chamber of Commerce wrote a paper to, on dollarization, which, w which was not meant to be a final paper or, or a, it was a really a, it was in carefully entitled draft for discussion paper, dis discussion purposes only. But it just raised the issue as to whether dollarization was something that Jamaica should look at. Now, um, and the, the key issue is, and uh, is this, is if you, and I think this is where we're having a, a good example in Jamaica, this, the competitive niche issue is critical. You can make the argument, for example, that we are seeing a real downturn in our goods and uh, our, you know, our productive capacity, you, you, you might put, put it more widely. 